Hi guys, my name is Doug. Welcome to my messy garage. Today's mess is looking at the Chasing Gladius Mini. Regular viewers of the channel will have seen my underwater adventure playlist. Uh, most of that video has been shot with the Gladius Mini. And it's fall here in Northwestern Ontario. I don't think I'm going to be using this thing anymore this year, so it's time to do a little bit of maintenance and package it up to, for storage over the winter. First thing I've done is charge everything. Always a good idea to put things away with a good charge in the battery. Dead batteries, if they sit for a number of months, tend to do damage. So everything's charged up fully and ready to put away. You've seen footage from this drone underwater. It does a very nice job taking a video. It's 4K, has headlights on it so that you can light up what you're looking at underwater. But I haven't shown all of the components. So here's the Gladius Mini. It has five thrusters. You've got three that are up and down and two that are forward. Unfortunately, this unit isn't capable of going sideways. It's only capable of driving straight forward based on these thrusters and turning. The Mini is also capable of tilting itself in the water along those, uh, along that axis. You may hear there's a little bit of sand inside the unit. That's what I want to get rid of today. The remote control has a cell phone holder. You probably could put a 10 inch iPad in there. Uh, I haven't tried doing that. Just using the cell phone seems to work. You do have to take your cell phone out of its protective case though because uh, the hooks are not deep enough to grab onto even a thin cell phone case. This is the base station. Provides connection between the base unit and the remote control and also the cell phone. Cable. connects up, spool it off of here and put it onto the drone. There, this is the 50 meter cable spool and there is also a 100 meter cable spool meaning that your maximum depth would be or maximum distance you can go is 100 meters. In front of the unit we have the lens we have two LED headlights. On the bottom of the unit, dust. We have uh, the ballast weight, fresh water, and in the bag I have a salt water one. And you need different weights for fresh water versus salt water because buoyancy in the two different types of water will be slightly different. So let's crack this thing open, clean the sand out, and we'll see what it looks like inside. Screwdriver I'm using is, um, I believe it's a number one Phillips, and I think the screws are number two Phillips, but unfortunately the number two Phillips will not fit into these deeper holes in the uh, base of the unit. So for those of you who are asking the question, how come there's sand in a drone that's designed to go in the water? Well, I had it in a uh, gravel bottom creek and unfortunately still learned how to use it and I ended up dropping it into the bottom, kind of forcing the bottom of the unit into the, uh, into the gravel of the bottom. So we got a little bit of sand in there. You don't want to watch me take out a whole bunch of screws, so I'll stop the camera here for a minute take out the screws and bring you back when I'm ready to start uh, cracking this thing open. Okay, I think we've got all the screws loose. Interestingly enough, this one is a Torx. Okay, the rest of the screws were all 
Phillips, but that one screw was a Torx. That's kind of interesting. And there we go. As you can see, kind of messy inside. Clean up the worst of this sand, and then I will bring you guys back, and we can look around the unit. Okay, so we've got a parts brush. Much of that is still on there; is just being held by static electricity. So we'll take that out to the garage and take the air gun to it before we put it together. So what we have here is a sealed and enclosed camera body. The wires come out the back of the camera body and run to the uh, data and charge port in the top and also come to each of the thrusters and the headlights. Now a couple of these thrusters did feel a little crunchy when I first tried turning them. They all feel pretty good now. Doesn't look too bad. We'll just give it a quick shot. Of give it a quick shot of duster. There we go. Clean enough. So as you can see, the vents here and the fact that there's no seal around this doesn't uh, there's no attempt to try and keep water out of the body of this if they did try and keep water out of the body it would create a lot of buoyancy and would uh, make it more challenging to have this thing drop and drop through the water I'm very surprised just how much sand there was in this unit it doesn't have a whole lot of space to get in basically the only way it could have gotten in here is through these vents but we've got it cleaned out now that's the main thing. Guess we can put this thing back together. Now again, you guys don't want to watch me having my arm across the front of the camera running a screwdriver. I'll bring you back when I have this back in one piece. So here we are, we got it all back together. Looking at that one torque screw, um, it looks like it's one of those security screws that has a stud kind of poking up out of the middle of it and I suspect the idea is that that's your tamper resistant screw I just used a standard uh, T20 I think it is or whatever the designation of that Torx driver and it seemed to work I do have a security set uh, kicking around if I had needed it but this seemed to do the job so uh, nothing terribly complicated about taking these apart And there's the unit. How do I like the Gladius Mini? I really do like it. Um, if I were doing it again, and money weren't a large concern, I would probably get the M2. The M2 is far more capable. You can transit like that. Uh, it's not simply a steer and go like this one is. The M2 is a larger machine. Also, the M2 has the has an accessory. You can put a uh, grab claw on it, so you can actually go down and grab onto something and bring it up, or take something down and release it on the bottom. All of which the Gladius Mini, in its stock form, is not capable of doing. It takes fantastic pictures underwater. Interestingly, where I got all of this sand 
was in a creek where I'd heard rumors of sunken snow machines. I wanted to go see if we could find them. And unfortunately, we didn't find any snow machines, but the water was tea colored or coffee colored. It was very dark brown. And I didn't think we would have any visibility when we got underwater. I'm going to include some footage that I shot when we were looking around uh, in this creek. And you will see that with the headlights on, the visibility was actually not bad. Anyways, thanks, thanks. for watching this one. Enjoy the footage of the underwater drone. There's nothing really exciting down there other than seeing the uh, or how good the visibility was in poor water conditions. Appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a good day. On to the next mess. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're not already subscribed, please consider hitting the subscribe button. And for more great content from Doug's Massey Garage, select the video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching.